Think Realty Nation. It's your host, Avi Golhar, and you're listening to The Power Play with Greg Rand and I. And it's our time to really dive in today to see what smart people are saying dumb things about real estate this week. Uh, Greg, what have you there's heard? There's no shortage, bro. There's I mean, no there's shortage no shortage, of smart shortage, right? People saying dumb things about real estate. <laughs> like all the time. This is, <laughs> this is going to be the way it is for a while. Um, and we'll leave the motivation aside for a second and just say, sure. I, I want, here's why it's important, okay? Um, if I go back in history a little while, and everybody remembers if they've been around, uh, or at least they've heard about it, the housing crisis is 10 years ago now. Yep. And so um, some folks that are young may have only heard about that. Some, unfortunately, lived through it in formative years, and so they think this is what the housing market does, right? What goes up comes crashing down, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you, you've heard the old quote from Warren Buffett, right? Um, he always, it, this is one of his most famous ones. He's got a lot, but this is one of the best ones. And it's something like, when other people are greedy, be fearful. And when other people are feel, fearful, be greedy. Yes. In other words, when the herd is running in one direction, that was, and obviously that's a rule of thumb. But when the herd is running in one direction, um, there's going to be opportunity there. But here's the thing. I want to focus on when it's time to be greedy. Like, what kind of mistakes can you make if you misplay that? It's it's the right time to be motivated and greedy, but you're being convinced to be fearful instead. Okay? Like, oh, just that's be a on really an interesting. That's a really interesting way to look at it. People make mistakes. Okay? It isn't just that I sit the sidelines and miss an opportunity because who cares? Whatever. I go on with my life. But there are people, I, and I'll give you an example. Right now, the, the affordability is the boogeyman in housing news, okay? Affordability, which is amazing if you think about it. When, have you ever heard anybody say the stock market is up today, so affordability is down, so it's bad news for the stock? The Dow is up 160 points today. That sucks because uh, affordability is lower, meaning the person who wants to buy stock is going to have to spend more money on the stock now because affordability is down, the market went up. And yet, when the housing market goes up, nowadays, this is all new. Don't forget, you would not have heard the term affordability. You wouldn't have heard of it until literally the last six months, eight months, when it became the people who like negativity and they seize upon how do we hit the housing market with some negativity. They're going with affordability. So the market's doing well. It's getting more more expensive. If you own property, it's getting more valuable. Your investments are working out better. Just like if you own stock and it went up, you won. You own real estate, it goes up, you've won, except that affordability is low and you're losing. How does that actually work, right? Yeah. And what they're talking about is the person who wants to get into the real estate market. It's costing them more money. And what people are projecting is that this is going to be bad because it's going to cause the market to crash. When in fact, what happens is the market slows down, i.e. people who are buying can't quite afford. They back off a little bit. The sellers have to come to the table. They have to acquiesce, so the appreciation slows down a little bit. It doesn't crash, okay? It only crashed last time because it got artificially too high, and that was because the banks were lending too aggressively. So yes. people literally were spending $400,000 on a house that was worth three hundred because the bank told them they could afford four hundred when they can only really afford three hundred. So yep. they literally had a blank check in their pocket. They spent it. It drove prices up. The market came back down again. What goes up came down one time in the last 80 years. Otherwise, it pretty much just bounces along in a nice gradual trajectory up. But now people are afraid of affordability. But here's my concern. The same people who are afford afraid that affordability is not good, what they're saying is people who want to buy homes aren't able to buy homes. And that's necessarily bad. Now, Abby, when was the last time you heard people who were motivated by people who want to buy homes can't? We have to do something to make it so that people who want to buy homes but can't can. That sound familiar to you? <laughs> yeah, not familiar at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Back in 10, 12 years ago, That's before right. the housing crisis, right? What did they say? We want to increase home ownership. People can't afford the rising prices. What should we do? Let's give them bigger mortgages. Let's relax the lending standards mm -hmm. so that people who qualify for a $300,000 mortgage can actually get a $400,000 mortgage. That way they can afford the house they couldn't otherwise afford. Sounds dumb. Smart people saying dumb things. That's exactly what they did. So we got the housing crisis last time because do-gooders in the early 2000s and the late 1990s decided let's get everybody into homes as homeowners. Why can't they afford? 
because they can't qualify for the mortgage qualify for the mortgage well then so what change the qualification the credit score is too low lower the standards on credit the down payment they don't have a down payment don't require a down payment they don't make enough money to qualify for the loan throw it all out let's give everybody the mortgages they want so they can all become homeowners my concern is not just that people are going to miss an opportunity because it's good times right now. My concern is the same eggheads who came up with the idea last time to give away easy mortgage money to solve the affordability problem that they saw 15 years ago are going to co- go and try to do the same thing. They're going to go to the same toolbox. Yeah. They're going to say affordability is a problem. We have to solve it. I know. Let's give away easy money out of the mortgage market. That's a really good point, right? So when that conversation starts to strike... And that, then that conversation becomes more prevalent with your uh, light your hair on fire news media. Yeah. Then, then should I be worried? Is that when the, yeah, the day of yeah. the day of uh, the re- the correction reckoning is coming? Because at that point, yes. But uh, so let's say we get there, right? Let's fast forward, say a year or two into the future, Greg. If we get there, then what's my play? Is my play to stay out of the market? Um, your play, if we get good question, first of all, you know, we're going to be there cause you're going to see on the news, I'm going to be chained to the fence in front of the white house or Congress, and I'm not going to eat or leave until they stop the nonsense. Okay. So you'll, you'll see my own personal protest about loosening lending standards as a way to solve affordability. I'll be, and, um, and, that's and, and I'll be there and I'm going to be there with a video camera as like your news crew. Like that's, yeah, that would be me, so funny to me. <laughs> and sneak me some chocolate chip cookies and stuff. Cause I'm not really going to fast. I just need you to sneak me some, uh, some yeah, candy. I got you, man. <laughs> but the point is if the market, I will actually, I promise that I'll be here talking about it. If the market inflates too much, what I'm going to be telling people is hold off a little bit. Okay. Right now it's buy. Okay. Buy because you're going to hold for 20 years. Buy because you're accumulating. You're building an empire. Empires aren't built in a day. Mm-hmm. So today is a good time to buy if you can. If you have enough money to make a good down payment. If you have a stable job, don't take undue risks. Begin if you haven't begun to acquire. And if you have properties, buy more at a reasonable pace. If you see them loosening lending standards. And by the way, don't believe it when they, they say it in the news. Wait till you hear it here. Because they, there is so much junk analysis going on out there from credible people. I'll give you an example, Avi. One of these stories on LinkedIn got me so frustrated that I made a $10,000 wager. I put it on LinkedIn. I said, okay, everyone thinks it's going to be a recession in 2020. Everyone thinks the housing market is going to crash. I bet ten grand there's no recession in 2020. Guess what? Crickets. Anytime I say anything, I get hammered on LinkedIn saying, oh, rose-colored glasses. Here comes Greg again right. saying the housing market is healthy, right? I say, okay, fine. I'll bet you ten grand. Crickets. Crickets. So um, <laughs> hold off if it gets haywire and bide your time. Save your money. Stockpile it. Execute your plan to acquire when there's blood in the water. I hope there won't be, but I yeah. know what's going to happen before there is. It's going to be relaxed lending standards driving prices too high. All right. Think Realty Nation. We have to end the show as much as I don't want to. Greg, thanks so much again. Always a pleasure.